It's fun having a super magnet accelerator, but it's a lot more fun to create a little mayhem and use it to launch a car. Interested? Here we go. This is a follow up to my video where I built the super magnet accelerator or Gaussian rifle. This is part of a science fair experiment or science experiment. And we were trying to figure out how you would measure how far a ball went. We quickly found out that no matter how many stations we went, like if we started here and hit one, hit two, hit three, hit four, five, six, seven, eight, that all the balls pretty much ran all the way down the room. Not much difference. So we had to come up with an idea on how to measure something from the power that comes out of the bearing. My son had a great idea. He says, why don't we use Hot Wheels or Matchboxes? And you know what? It worked. A couple design thoughts you might want to consider though. You want something that's flat on the back. This Optimus Prime is perfect because it's right there and you can line it up when it runs out. You can look right straight down on it and get a fairly good measurement really quickly. The other thing Optimus Prime has going for him is that he has six wheels, kind of heavy. He's about around 43 grams. And so he's pretty stable. This one is our second place finisher. It had a nice flat back on it, but we found that if you hit it with too much force, it might derail off of the Hot Wheels track. And that kind of makes it hard to do the measurement. When we did this test, we had the track lying flat, but since I'm shooting it here, I have it running up if you had enough power, you could certainly come up here and see how high it went. And that might be very impressive with some magnets. But ours aren't that strong. But they were running a good 60 centimeters out. This car has a flat back and you can see that it really doesn't give much surface for the ball bearing to go on. I'll show you what happens with a less than ideal car. Okay, you shoot your ball bearing and it derails the car. So not a good choice. Some cars might actually surprise you. You notice this is the car I used in my intro. It doesn't seem like it has too much room for the balls to hit into, but it's a little lighter than Optimus Prime. So let's see how it does. Yeah, it went further than any of the other ones. It's a less rolling resistance. Here's one with kind of an angled back, and I predict it's not going to be so good. Blue car test run. Whoa! Shot the bearing right out. Red car test run. Let's see how it goes. Not bad. Optimus Prime test run. Here we go. We used Optimus Prime for the science fair test, but you know what? This fastback would also work too, because it's lighter. It's about maybe half an ounce lighter. Weight does make a difference. Another thing we did that makes for an interesting experiment is we adjusted the distance between the two stations. So in this case, the blue area is five centimeters between this magnet and this magnet. And you can see we marked positions with blue pencil, that's our five centimeter marks, at here and here and here and here. And that way, if for some reason the magnet stations do move, you can put them right back. And then you can see that we have the regular pencil marks represent stations at 10 centimeters. These orange or red marks represent stations that are 15 centimeters apart. The marks are really helpful when you want to repeat the test. Once you've marked them, you don't have to go through and measure it every time. It's just a way of varying different conditions in order to get more data. And then you can make conclusions on whether or not the distance between the stations really does make a difference. There you go. With some simple modifications and a couple crazy thoughts, we turned a toy into a science experiment. Thumbs up and comments always appreciated. Thanks for watching.